running, jumping, blocking, dunking. When it comes to Jared Allen, the things he excels at on the basketball court could easily be summed up in just a few words if you aren't one for superlatives. Put simply, he is a man that just comes in and does his job, day in and day out. But if you care to take a deeper look, the real marvel of Jared Allen's game lies precisely within his dogged consistency on the floor. Up until now, Allen has remained relatively unheralded in the public eye. Outside of a few noteworthy blocks on the likes of LeBron and Giannis early in his career, his continued game-altering presence has gone underappreciated. This underappreciation appeared to extend to the franchise that drafted him as well, who ultimately cast him aside in the final year of his stay there, opting to appease their two recently acquired stars by placing him in the bench role in favor of DeAndre Jordan and ultimately trading him to Cleveland in their acquisition of a third star. Throughout it all, Jared continued to do what he does best, which is show up and get the job done. But there were signs he was tired of going about his business quietly. After his arrival in Cleveland, he continued to protect the paint and punish rims at a level that garnered him a $100 million contract extension this past offseason. Recently, however, the surprising success of Allen's upstart Cavs has made it harder for Allen to continue existing in the relative silence of past years. For Jared Allen, both his game and the talk around it are getting louder than ever. In this video, we will examine Jared Allen's continued growth as a player and why consistency is perhaps the greatest skill of them all. I've been working on that, whoever's listening. It is often said that the quickest way from point A to point B is a straight line, and Allen's entire basketball existence revolves around this theory. Whether it be obstructing opponents seeking lanes to the rim with his relentless rim defense, or creating lanes to the rim for his teammates via quality screens and intimidating rolls to the basket. On the defensive end, Allen is immensely valuable as a rim protector continuously deterring opponents trying to make their way to the basket. Since he stepped in the league, Allen has been a fearsome rim protector, making life difficult for each and every opponent that dare put a shot up in his vicinity. Since his rookie year in 2017, he's had four seasons in the top 13 in total blocks and five seasons in the top 17 in blocks per game. His 4.3 block percentage is similar to the likes of noted rim protector Dwight Howard over the course of his career. Aside from the block rate, offensive players are down just as bad in shots that don't end up in a block. Over the course of his career, opponents have shot at least 9 percentage points worse within 6 feet of the rim when Allen is in the vicinity. And in this season in particular, offensive players are shooting 17% worse within 6 feet of the basket when Jared is protecting the paint. He really doesn't like when people try to score on him at the rim. Despite career high numbers and shot altering proficiency, Jared is currently averaging the lowest block rate of his career. This is likely the result of a sort of evolving role as a defender, where Jared can be found venturing outside the paint with the support of his rangy front court partner Evan Mobley. Although he has shown he can move well for his size, in previous years, Jared was mostly a drop coverage all-star deterring opponents by hanging back in screen roll situations and creating a wall that most were not inclined to climb over. This season, however, with him no longer needing to always be the primary backline defender, he's been getting a little more adventurous in heading out to the deep waters of the perimeter that big men of his profile tend to stay away from. In these situations, Allen has shown good lateral movement and good hip flexibility that allows him to stay with offensive players trying to attack him off the dribble. He has also shown quick active hands on the perimeter, poking balls loose at opportune times. This has led to Allen becoming a more active playmaker outside the painted area and has resulted in him putting up his best steal rate of his career thus far. The defensive future with him and Evan Mobley, who we'll discuss later, is most certainly bright. But now, we're going to talk about the other side of the ball, where Allen is making strides as an offensive weapon. Over the course of his career, 
Allen's main offensive utility has lied in his role as a roller in pick and roll situations. Since entering the league, Allen has logged nearly 1,000 possessions as a role man, with the play type taking up around 33% of his log play types over his first four years of his career. This brother has been doing a lot of dunking. The dynamics of a pick and roll player are not exactly rocket science, but Allen has some traits that have allowed him to be a reliable pick and roll partner for his entire career. Outside of being a willing screener and an explosive athlete, Allen also understands how to utilize the space created in pick and roll situations, giving his guards consistent passing windows and being ready to capitalize off the catch. One of the things Allen does is staying pass ready while on the move. He always tries to square up with the ball handler, usually orienting the front of his body with the ball to provide an easier target. Additionally, Allen stays in the semi crouch position while on the move instead of running upright which allows him to explode more quickly into his finishes. Although Allen has been a high usage pick and roll player, the Cavs have lessened his frequency in this play type and Allen has begun to explore different ways to put the ball in the basket. Given his athletic advantages over other bigs, Allen has been no stranger to using his speed to his advantage. Over the course of his career, Allen has consistently used his speed and transition as a means to create opportunities for himself at the rim. But with the Cavs, Allen has begun to leverage that speed in other ways on the offensive end. In off-ball screening situations, Allen uses his speed to make smart decisive cuts when he finds gaps in the defense. He also uses his quick feet to create deep position in the paint for easy buckets. Even in situations as a ball handler at the top of the key, he is using his speed to create advantages when the opportunities present themselves, such as calling his own number in handoff situations. However, the place where Allen's quickness is being explored the most is in post-up situations. Now it sounds rather counterintuitive to mention quickness in the discussion about post-up offense, but Allen is finding success using his quickness to take advantage of post-up situations. During his time with the Nets, Allen was used so infrequently in the post that I couldn't even find synergy numbers for his first three years. Despite Allen's constant presence in the paint, he did seem to struggle in matchups with more bruising types down low in post situations on both sides of the ball. On offense in particular, Allen had a difficult time in finishing situations that involved off the dribble contact, particularly with his off hand, because Allen has a tendency to palm the ball in certain finishing situations, and the physical bumping of post situations led to some wayward misses in these situations that required more touch. But since coming to the Cavs, Allen has found himself in post opportunities more frequently and has shown early signs of success. In the 2020 season, Allen accounted for one post possession per night, scoring one point per possession, which was good for 63rd percentile in the league. This season, Allen is averaging just under two post up possessions per game, scoring 1.15 points per possession, which is good for the 89th percentile in the league. For the most part, Allen is not beating his opponents with brute force in these situations but rather employing his quickness with a multitude of spins and ball fakes to keep defenders off balance and finish over the top. Allen also uses his quickness to get solid post position so he doesn't have extended battles trying to back down players in the paint. Another area of the game that Allen has been pushing the envelope is as a passer, an area of his game that he has been trying to improve for several years. Now it is unlikely that Allen will ever develop into a true dimesman, but there have been some interesting developments with regard to his passing, particularly in how it works in tandem with his front court partner Evan Mobley. They have a nice little reciprocal high-low passing game that will be interesting to watch develop in the coming seasons. All in all, Allen's consistency in being a deterrent and presence at the rim has already made him an immensely valuable player in the NBA. If these new developments in the other parts of his game continue to track with the likes of his dynamic young teammates in Mobley and Garland, the Cavs will be a problem for many years to come. Team ...starting eight out of their first 11 on the road. Lakers completely different. They're starting a lot at home. 
home. The lob and the jam. I'll be watching you with that I, tight shirt on down there calling the Cowboys game. I, I thought oh, you'd be, be on the radio. So I'm Jamal Mosley, Nate Timmons, Greg right. Rillmeyer, a good young coaching staff. Mobley fires a foul line jumper.